In today's video, you'll see how marine worms battle for supremacy to reproduce, and you're also going to find a creature that switches sex just so it doesn't go extinct, and lastly, the Suriname toad that grows its eggs on the skin before it's fertilized. All these and more you'll see if you stay tuned. Number 10. The Stingray. Stingrays are giant ocean dwellers that feed on mollusks, crustaceans, and planktons. Even though they're not aggressive, they have powerful venom that can be fatal if not treated. There are countless interesting facts about these animals, especially their reproductive patterns. When it's time to mate, females release electrical signals in the water and the males interpret it immediately. Males then move towards them to court and fertilize their eggs. The mating period lasts for seven months before the female ovulates. If you see two stingrays swimming closely, the chances are that they're from the opposite sex and are currently mating. This animal is viviparous, meaning they do give live birth. The young live inside their mother's body and feed on the eggs there, and seeing that this animal breaks out of the norm and gives birth to its young is a pretty exhilarating sight. Number 9. Marine Flatworms Marine flatworms appear in a riot of colors. Also called the Persian carpet flatworm, their sex life is one of the most exciting stories you're going to hear today. The reason for that is because each worm is a hermaphrodite, meaning that it has two penises. When they meet, they create a fence with their penises and try to inject sperm into their partner while avoiding getting inseminated. These duels last up to one hour and are so intense that the worms suffer permanent stab wounds. The winner of the contest is the worm that succeeds in injecting sperm on the other partner first. Not only does the winner become the father to more offspring, but it also goes home with lesser wounds compared to the other worm that was defeated. The loser is badly injured, plus it has more fertilized eggs to carry as well. Researchers believe that flatworms evolved into this kind of elaborate sexual battle because being pregnant comes with a high cost in terms of effort and energy. The dad goes away without bearing responsibility for the child, and it finds another prospective loser to try its tricks on. Number 8. Larger Pacific Striped Octopus the Pacific Striped Octopus lives a solitary life for some reason, and that reason might be cannibalism. You see, cannibalism is common among them, especially sexual cannibalism. There are countless occasions when a female mates with their male counterpart and then swallows him after strangling him to death. The Seattle Aquarium in 2016 banned the mating of this giant octopus for fear that the males might kill the females afterwards. Despite the violent tendencies of these animals, they are less studied and do not have a scientific name. What we do know about them is that they have eight remarkable legs, and males and females share dens and feed on each other in what they termed mating. They are known to form colonies of up to 40 individuals despite living solitary lifestyles. While females die shortly after their eggs hatch, the males die after mating, as like I said. This animal lay clutches of eggs for up to six months, thereby giving them multiple mating opportunities, unlike their cousins that have just one. Number 7. Palolo Worm when the timing of the lunar cycle is right, swarms of palolo worms rise to the surface of the sea from Indonesia to the South Pacific, and as they move upwards, they burst apart and release gooey clouds of sperm and eggs. The rising is a great occasion for locals, and the worms can either be baked, fried, or eaten raw. Oh. In the 1890s, researchers and everyone wondered why they had light-sensing eye spots, yet they didn't have eyes, mouths, or even heads technically. Apparently, the part of the worm that participates in the annual ritual of rising to the surface of the water is not all there is. The other half of its body remains tucked in hard corals and rocks. Before spawning time, the worm develops a special segment on its back that is filled with sperm or eggs, and depending on the cues from the moon, the rear end breaks off and floats to the water surface to get fertilized. Number 6. Blue Banded Goby Many fish species switch from one sex to the other depending on their social status, age, or size. The change itself is often constant except when it comes to tropical gobies. These animals are highly social and live in crowds of up to 120 fish per square yard. Each of the groups is headed by a size-based hierarchy of several females below the man. For gobies, it's ideal to be king. Males have more opportunities in their genes than their female counterparts who are limited by the number of eggs that they can lay. When the male from the group dies, the biggest female then changes sex and takes on the role of the deceased partner. When there are no females in the pack, the males can then turn to females and reproduce. The smaller and more submissive fish switch their testes for ovaries, while the bigger ones remain males and mate with the new females. This gives an entirely new meaning to kissing the homies goodnight. The sexual shape-shifting seems like overkill since a male fish can swim off searching for a female. But blue-banded gobies are known to be territorial. They pose fierce competition on coral reefs where real estate is a premium. 
They often compete for the small nooks that keep them safe from predators. For this fish species, it's actually easier to change their sex than find a new home. Which in itself is hilarious, but a little depressing, actually. Number 5. The Seahorse The norm in the animal kingdom is that females produce the eggs and the males fertilize them. While this mystery is pretty clear to scientists, researchers are struggling to understand why the reproductive patterns of seahorses are different. This animal is the only vertebrate where only the males get pregnant. To be clear, there are lots of other males in nature that hold fertilized eggs in their mouths, and for instance, animals like the cardinal fish and Darwin's frog stick eggs to their bodies. But you gotta admit, seahorses are cooler. Seahorses also take their dad duties to an entirely new level. They ensure that the eggs in their pouches get sufficient oxygen. They also even have contractions while giving birth, plus they have the right genes to produce nutrition for the eggs. While hundreds of fish species change their sex, this one does not. It remains consistent from start to finish, and what's even more amazing is that they make male pregnancy look easy, such that the females may actually be jealous about this. Number 4. The Cuckoo Catfish Moving on from parental goodism, let's go to a horrifying monstrosity called the Cuckoo Catfish, who engages in a horrific game of cannibalism before it gives birth to its child. It houses its egg in its mouth and would swim over and lay it in the mouth of a cichlid for her to carry. When this happens, the male cichlid swims to fertilize what he believes are the female's eggs. Sadly though, he has been tricked, bamboozled, and then killed. The parental pair then swim away to resume breeding without minding their young ones. All of this drama happens within a few seconds. This is because the cuckoo eggs hatch faster than the cichlids and newborns often eat the cichlid's eggs. When the female cichlid returns with a mouth filled with sperm to fertilize her eggs, they're either gone or have diminished in number. It then quickly scoops up the eggs of her brood, including the catfish's eggs in her mouth. The host eggs take about seven days to hatch, while the young catfish hatches between two to four days. Number three. Cichlids. Cichlids belong to the fish family called cichlidae, which include angelfish and tilapia. When it's time for reproduction, the male puts the fertilized eggs in his mouth, which is where it stays until hatching. This process is called mouth brooding. During this period, males are unable to eat. Sometimes the female fish carries the fertilized eggs in their mouth and would exchange with males. This in turn is called biparental mouth brooding. Most fish born using this method are often underweight at first, but with time they begin to grow normally. Cichlids are very protective of their spawning territory. If you plan to get this sea creature, it's important to know that they would need a special tank as they may frustrate the lives of other fish when they're spawning. Also, on top of that, males are not responsible for carrying and raising their young. Heck, they may even eat their babies if they're around them enough. Number 2. Right Whale Even though the blue whale is larger than the right whale, they're a force to reckon with in the ocean when it comes to size. Males have the largest testicles of any living creature on the planet, and each of them weighs a whopping 500 kilos. Based on this animal's body size, one wouldn't expect their testicles to be that big. This oversized organ is the result of this animal's peaceful nature, and the males rarely fight over females, but male-to-male -male clashes are common among them. Most fight scenes occur in the female reproductive tract. Female right whales are promiscuous and are said to flirt with over 40 suitors. They only give birth to calves every few years, therefore the result of unprotected sex is not an unwanted pregnancy. Since males are faced with the opportunity to become fathers, they have evolved to release large quantities of sperm. The more sperm they produce, the better than chances of it passing to another gene. Number 1. The Suriname Toad Unlike most toads in the animal kingdom, the Suriname Toad has an unusual reproduction mechanism. Males call females by making a clicking sound underwater. When a willing female hears it, she releases 60 to 100 eggs while the male fertilizes them and pushes the eggs on her back. They then stick to her skin. After a few days, the skin grows up around the eggs, thereby forming something like a honeycomb structure before enclosing it completely. Even after hatching, the eggs continue to develop under her skin. When it's ready, the fully formed toadlets push themselves to loosen the female's skin. The pocket on her back gradually reveals her feet and snouts. When the time is right, it pops out of the hole and heads to the surface of the water to breathe and start life. These tiny babies start snapping at food almost immediately, even if it means feeding on their siblings. The mother then sheds her skin in anticipation of another breeding season. See you all next time!